it's, it's on? Okay, sorry about that people. The microphones, there was a short. Everyone's mic was out, so no. Um, I need a motion to come out of executive session. Thank you, Matt. Second. Second. Thank you, Brian. All in favor? Including myself is a yes. Ms. Berezny, would you lead us in the um, Pledge of Allegiance, please? Thank you. Before, before I ask um, for the high school students to come up, there's something that I have to say. We have been, the, the board has heard a lot of talk um, that we did not include the public and the parents in the search. And that's definitely untrue. We promised the community that they will be included, and we kept that promise. Our search firm conducted Zoom meetings with in-house staff and top to bottom. It also included our town board members and our supervisor. They also put out a survey for the entire community. All the information was on the district's Facebook page and on our webpage. People answered. There is a link on underneath superintendent search on the BOE dropdown for a 50 page document of every single comment that was made to the search firm, either if it came from in-house or if it came from the public. It was given more than enough time to conduct that, to get everything together. And it, you have my promise, my guarantee that this board read and went through those 50 pages. So if you wanna go look and see, it's, it's there under that drop. So with that being said, opportunity for high school students, please. Hello, and my name is Amani Thomas. Last month, I attended the Long Island Leaders of Tomorrow conference where it was with students from schools such as Senator Riches, Walt Whitman, Deer Park, and GC Tech. We discussed hybrid learning and what happened during the pandemic, mental health support, what helps students during this year, what schools should do to focus on social injustice. Throughout our conversation, we talked most heavily upon how each of our school districts have been great with mental health focus and how the topic of social injustice needs to be talked about more heavily. For mental health, we know that social workers and school psychologists are always there, but it's greatly important if we take a moment each week where teachers really just ask how we were before jumping into a lesson. Knowing a, little more, knowing a little more that it's not just the social workers or psychologists that are there, but our teachers too. As we all know that we are in a pandemic, so assemblies would not be able to happen. But if we can form newsletters, we'll be able to talk about certain topics like social injustice in order for our students to formulate their own opinions afterwards instead of students feeling as if they're, we are forcing them into learning something that they don't want to learn about. Also in Mr. Guadagnino's super public affairs class, students are doing modules based upon issues that they're intrigued in. Some of the topics are centered around mental health during the pandemic, environmental issues, poverty and income, dropout rates, issues around ENL students and learning, reading levels and multiculturalism within the county and the school district. The students have been in contact with numerous administrators and are happy to be receiving feedback and the staff has been just as happy to be helping them with their projects. Also this spring, the Blue Mass is coming back and it will be presenting High School Musical. Though it will not be in person, they have made a way to make it a live stream. This will be taking place within the next coming months. Next month on May 21st, the juniors will be having a prom at Eastman and Wading River. As well as since the last meeting, we have been back in school full time. Thus this far, we have heard positive feedback and students are thrilled to be in person and back to being as normal as possible. Though some are hesitant on being coming in with the face shields, 
Kids have been accommodating and wearing them, and the staff at the school have been wearing them to show that they're in this with us. Student government has also plastered around posters with the school with encouraging words to welcome them in as well. Furthermore, the PTSO has made yard signs for seniors and they are still being sold and you can buy them whenever. Followed by this, the seniors' annual picnics will be taking place this year and on behalf of the seniors, I'd like to thank the PTSO for hosting it. Last year, we had the first senior drive through and it will be happening again this year. The seniors will also be having a prom on June 21st at Majestic Gardens and of course our graduation at the end of the year. Lastly, to mention, on social media, there has been a page created where seniors can showcase what college they will be attending and their major. They will be posted on May 1st, which is College Decision Day. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any public comments on the agenda items? Nothing on the internet? Anyone in the audience? Not seeing any? Superintendent's report, Ms. Tona. Thank you, Mrs. Downs. Good evening, everyone. I have several brief announcements. First, I'm very pleased to see that due in part to the efforts that we have taken to reach out to charter school families to share the wonderful programs that exist within our district, seven students have withdrawn from the charter school and our enrollment is up by seven for the month of March. Second, we're planning uh, for end of the year activities across the district as well as high school graduation and the moving up ceremonies in the K-8 schools. I do ask for the community to be flexible as the restrictions regarding public gatherings continue to evolve. And finally, we have two presentations this evening. First, Mr. Schneider and I will share our final presentation on the 21-22 school budget. And then Mr. Burke and Ms. Lonergan are here to present and share information about Pulaski Street School. So let's get started. So tonight is our fifth and final budget presentation before uh, the board adopts the school budget this evening. So here you see the agenda. <clears throat> Mr. Hines, we're having trouble with the advancer. So here you see the agenda for this evening. And then we always like to revisit our Board of Education goals. And now we take a look at the additions to the 21-22 budget, starting with personnel. Um, you could see the list there that was discussed last week. This does not include any administrative positions that the board did not endorse last week. And this list, um, the budget also contains funds for any additional positions that might be, uh, may be determined at a later date. And then we have our slide with additions regarding uh, materials and supplies and equipment. And this does include the addition of the Phillips kitchen equipment that was discussed last week. Now I'd like to turn over to Mr. Schneider. Okay, uh, so here you can see on this slide the total proposed expenditure budget. We're looking at going to the voters with a $159,407,613 budget. The, uh, it's a large increase driven by the increase in state aid. You can see the categories we've broken it down to there. Uh, this is another way to look at the budget. This is called the three-part budget where all the components are broken into uh, three sections set down by the state, administrative, program, and capital. You can see that there is a growth in the amount, in the, in the percentage of the program uh, compared to this year's current budget. Obviously the, obviously, the big increase in the budget is driven by the state aid. We looked at this slide last time. You can see that we're getting uh, a foundation aid increase of more than $12 million and a state aid increase of $13.8 million. Uh, as we said last time, we owe a debt of gratitude to Assemblyman Thiel, Senator Palumbo, and Assemblywoman 
Julio uh, uh, for her, her, all their help in getting uh, the state aid to us. You can see that the uh, use of reserves is staying steady from last year as we discussed last time. We want to make sure that we have no peaks and no valleys in what we do. We try to stay as steady as possible. The big takeaway for the voters, uh, and I think something that uh, I'm sure the board is very proud of, is the fact that we're going to a uh, going out with a property proposed anticipated property tax levy of zero percent, meaning for three years in a row, the community will not be paying any more in property taxes for the operation of the school district. So you can see the obviously the revenue matches the expenditures, which is important when you're doing the budget, and the very large increase in state aid. And here you could see our future presentations. Uh, beginning this week, we've been invited to each of our PTO meetings and SEPTA meetings to present the budget. So that's going to happen over the next few weeks. And then on May 11th is the public hearing on the proposed budget. May 18th is budget vote date from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. So if anyone has any questions. Questions from the board? Thank you. So now it's Pulaski Street. <laughs> and now I'd like to invite up to the podium Mr. Patrick Burke and Ms. Callan Lonergan, the principal and assistant principal of Pulaski Street School. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. This is going to work. Um, what's my advance button here? Right side. Okay. Uh, distinguished members of the Board of Education, members of the district office, thank you. Pulaski Street School would like to thank you for the opportunity and inviting us to do a quick presentation, 15 minutes or less. I have my guidelines. If I speak quickly, I apologize, but I want to make sure we get everything in. Pulaski Street School, I'm not sure if the Board of Ed, do you have visual of my slides as well? Oh, right there, okay. Um, there's a little saying at the bottom of this slide. It says, let the ripple become the wave. This was created by uh, Ms. Bauman as well as um, computer lab assistants um, over previous years. It's a mantra. It's something that we've incorporated into our PBIS model. We truly believe that Pulaski Street School as a 5-6 building is the beginning stages of the eventual blue wave. We are the ripple, we will become the wave. It's like tossing a rock into a pond that's flat. You'll see that ripple. I also equated to when I was a young man, it was a song I used to sing. No, Mrs. Lonergan, I will not sing the song. Uh, but it was a church song and it talked about a fire. And it says it only takes a spark to get a fire going and soon all those around will warm up in its glowing. And that's what is happening at Pulaski. At this point, we are making tremendous growth, tremendous changes. Pulaski Street School, throughout the building now, because of our PBIS matrix, you will see uh, examples of Pulaski pride, the wave, uh, the matrix of uh, patience, respect, inclusivity, determination, and encouragement. That's woven into every aspect of our building. About Pulaski Street School, I have this slide up there. I wanted to throw some quick bullets out there. We are currently a building that houses 800 fifth and sixth grade students, 680 in person since uh, January, uh, in person, live, five days a week, and 120 fully remote. It's a beautiful brick building. I know you all know it. It's majestic columns, high, uh, high windows, and high ceilings. It was built in 1939. $750,000 bond made this possible. Uh, K through uh, 12, it was a high school. Pulaski is unique. I pause. Pulaski is unique because it's the first time our four different K-4 buildings come together under one roof. Pulaski is also a strong community partnership with community organizations, and we are a crucial part of the adolescent development of our students that come in as an elementary student but leave as a middle schooler. Same that occurs in the middle school and then they leave as high schoolers. It takes a village. I, I, I think I'm going to not spend three minutes of my 15, but every person, every person listed on this 
slide right here is an integral part of the success of this building. There's not one group from custodial staff to our secretarial staff, computer lab assistants, social workers, bilingual teachers. I, I, I want to just read them all, but for lack of time, each person gives 150% for the success of this building. We would not be progressing and moving in the strides that we are if it wasn't for each of the groups that are in this, uh, on this slide. It does take a village. Little uh, pictures, I, we went around and took a picture of uh, our band and orchestra and our custodial staff, sec uh, our, our uh, cafeteria workers, everybody, our academic intervention support teachers, supporting our staff, ENL teachers, everybody. This is important and I bring this up because private first class Garfield M. Langhorn has been woven into Pulaski. Private First Class uh, Garfield Langhorn is honored as a hometown hero and we make sure uh, we have declared that the second Friday of October to be Garfield Langhorn Remembrance Day. We do currently do an essay contest. We have local officials as well as the Garfield Langhorn Committee do a big presentation and recognize those students that have um, written ex uh, essays. Garfield Langhorn is a perfect example of Pulaski pride. Uh, and we will do all and continue to keep uh, his honor and him in memory and in recognition. We have a heart here. I want to thank the Fink family personally. Uh, there's not a time that goes by that when you see the beautification of Pulaski on the outside, they have been responsible. Um, there's a little heart there with a little Band-Aid, and it's about healing. Pulaski Street School is a building that is undergoing a tremendous uh, amount of healing and moving forward. We're doing this as one step at a time, one block at a time. It's built on trust, it's built on respect, it's built on listening from all perspectives. We care about what the community says, we care about what our teachers say, um, and we care about each other. I threw this picture up there about Pulaski Pride t-shirt. I'm grateful for Angel Barbosa who created that uh, in art class. It was, a, it was a, an initiative contest, and um, we also had Summer Relander that worked on it as well, but uh, you know, there's input from everybody. Everybody counts in this building. Quick video, please. If we were doing a commercial, we would have aired that as our commercial break. Big change this year also, our master schedule. I want to just point this out quickly. It creates new opportunities. We share this with the entire staff. It's available at any time to find where any teacher may need to provide services. We added a third lunch period, which resulted in 33% less students in the cafeteria and recess. We've created a five recess station outside. This increases safety, order, and management. We created collegial teams on a schedule for common planning time during the PD. If you look at this slide, basically we could service and provide professional development for our entire gen ed teachers uh, in one day. If you look at all the periods and the colors, each of those teachers are are um, put together based on their either CT or special education. Communication, that's key. So after a master schedule and after focusing on building relationships, we're focused on communication. We provide a week in review to all of our Pulaski staff. We also have been forwarding it to the district office. Every Friday we provide just a heads up with respects to things that are coming and also the accomplishments of the week. We provide a monthly newsletter out to the community. Virtual PTO meetings are every Monday, first Monday of the month. Class dojo, Twitter, open door policy, anytime, any person, phone call or come into the school. Virtual morning announcements, something brand new, Ms. Lonergan's gonna speak about, very excited about. Propio, talking points, connect dead calls. Communication is key. Ms. Lonergan. 
Thank you, Mr. Burke. Hi, everybody. So this is just a look at some of our academic programs. Um, it's important to note that in addition to the whole group instruction that occurs at Pulaski, we also have our teachers uh, working tirelessly doing small group instruction. And that's not only just to support our students that need extra support, it's also to provide enrichment to students who need, who are um, stronger academically. There's a quote you cannot Maslow, Maslow until you bloom. And our social work team really is um, a fantastic part of Pulaski. We have two social workers as well as a school psychologist. If you walk through the halls of Pulaski, you'll notice signs like this throughout the building. The opposite end of it says, take what you need. And then we have other ones that say, um, leave what you can. Oop, I went back, I went too forward, I'm sorry. We have a Pulaski, a Pulaski school support team, which is composed of classroom teachers, support staff, parents, and administrators, and we meet throughout the year. Together, we formulated our SEP and generated an action plan to help us achieve our goals. Our Pulaski parent-teacher organization has brought some wonderful things to Pulaski this year. They uh, have provided indoor recess bags, which were super handy during the long, arduous days of indoor recess of the winter months. Um, they're also providing our field day shirts, and they're also going to be providing some refillable water stations for next year. So we're very grateful for them and their support. Our morning announcement is something that we've recently initiated. Um, it's been very well received. Every morning at 8.15, the entire school logs in for a Google Meet where we review our morning announcements. We do the pledge, we do birthdays. Um, this week we have Mrs. Carrillo's class who's presenting. That's their Bitmoji class picture. <laughs> Um, it also gives us an opportunity to review common themes throughout the month. So for this month, we're focusing on determination, which leads us to our Pulaski Pride Initiative. Mr. Burke had kind of gone over it before. Patience, respect, inclusivity, determination, and encouragement. I'd like to take this time to thank our PBIS team who has worked tirelessly to restructure and roll out our PBIS initiatives. This includes reviewing feedback from staff, students, and parents. We've also reviewed and updated our PBIS matrix. And a new part of our program this year is we have P Pulaski ambassadors, which are our students that applied and have assembled to help us make the program best for Pulaski. This is our matrix that shows our specific character traits and what they look like throughout the building. So if you notice the columns are classrooms and the lunchroom, the gymnasium, buses, and we actually added a column this year for virtual learners. That's a picture of our Pulaski ambassadors. It was actually very sweet. They applied all on Google form and they meet weekly with the PBIS team. Our PBIS program has also changed with regards to the, the, the prizes. Uh, previously, on Fridays, the students would come during lunch to shop from the PBIS, PBIS Pride Cart. Now we have more of a cumulative um, option where we focus more on relationship building and social skills. So if you could see the first Pride card they get, or excuse me, the first prize that they get is a Pulaski Pride pencil, and then the, the prizes get progressively larger. So it could be anything from having lunch with a friend or maybe being principal for the day. And these are all prizes that the children wanted. Ms. Creighton's our library media specialist. She organizes several things for us throughout the year, virtual author visits, virtual trips, as well as coding. There's some pictures here of our students. We also have a fantastic music program. We have Mr. Hewitt, our, our general music and chorus teacher, Ms. Coppolone, who's our orchestra teacher, and Mr. Randazzo, our band. This is something that Mr. Fallo had done with the art club. They refurbished um, guitars and actually sent them halfway across the world to Afghanistan. And if you have some time, please Google Sweet Dreams by the Miraculous Love Kids, and the guitars are focused here in the video. This is our physical education classes who are still doing really great things despite COVID guidelines. And this is something that we're also very proud of here at Pulaski, um, or at, over at Pulaski. This year we started a Pulaski peer mediation. We have a group of students that were selected that were trained in um, peer mediation for low level conflicts. And Mr. Hines, I apologize. I'm gonna try and click it and hopefully it works. Oh, there it did. Hello, so peer mediation is a system in which in case two students are having a conflict, a pair of peer mediators will help, will come to aid them 
and help them resolve the problem on their own terms and help them come to an agreement. This can be helpful and good in many ways, which Maya and you will explain. Um, humiliation is really important because it um, the uh, the person that we are meeting will be more comfortable with the person their age, and it's important for what we do is like we do not take sides and we do not tell them what they did wrong. We rec we help them recognize what they did wrong, and then when we come to agreement uh, to an agreement, we we make sh we make sure that they're comfortable with, with the agreement and there's no getting in trouble or anything like that. They resolve the conflict. Okay. We also have offered several professional development opportunities for our teachers, which, which included some aspects of CPI, which is the de-escalation training, and also a collegial circle on responsive classroom framework. We've also been partnered with the Long Island Regional Partnership as part of the MTSS plan. Um, they come and they have facilitated several professional developments for our, for our, our staff. And I shall hand it back to you. Yes, okay. thank you. And to, fi uh, to finish up, uh, we want to just focus, we're offering, just recently started offering virtual school clubs, uh, new teacher club, future teachers, uh, peer mediation club as discussed. Uh, let me try to go back. Uh, the Gratitude Club, a homework club for both fifth and sixth grade students, a drama club, student council book club, and also a broadcasting club. And that came as a result of our virtual morning announcements that Ms. Lonergan had discussed. Soon to come, we're very much excited about the fact that Pulaski Street School will finally have a display at the front of the building when people come in, and it will um, offer the first slide on the left where it will offer the up and coming events, uh, the weather, uh, streamlining maybe, let the ripple become a wave, all of these different things, but we are super excited and appreciative of that opportunity. On the top right, you can say, how does a rain garden uh, work? We are and have received um, from the town of Riverhead, Ms. Relander was able to secure a um, opportunity for us where we are going to have a garden outside. The purpose of this is to utilize the runoff so that we uh, don't need to use sprinklers, um, there will be a, um, a container that will house the water and it will um, offer students outside. Uh, there'll be a garden at the annex and inside we have a courtyard. We're going to have a raised garden and we're also turning that into an area where students can eat lunch outside. Bottom right is a calm room. This is also money that's coming from uh, our SIG money. Just a little bit of money where we're just going to create a room that's calming for students. Uh, a nice environment with uh, chairs and music and, and plants. That is it. This is a we are proud of Pulaski and we can't say that enough. We are proud to work there. We are proud to be part of that family and we are just uh, appreciative of the opportunity to share with the community uh, what Pulaski is all about, what we've been doing and where we're going. So we thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Burke and Ms. Lonergan. And you know, I'm very proud of all of the efforts uh, that you're leading at Pulaski, as well as uh, your staff's efforts and your students. Um, many of the, the topics that came up in this presentation tonight were over the past few years growing. And you know, when we look at a, a school that's identified as a need of improvement um, as a TSI school like Pulaski, with the support through the school improvement grant, and having to put together a plan, an action plan with, with SMART goals, this is the outcome of that. And that's why it is so valuable to have that plan of action and you've been doing a great job carrying it out. So I applaud you for your efforts. Thank you so much for presenting. I, I have a question. Mr. Burke, can you come up to the podium? I have a question. I also am, was extremely impressed on what I've seen here tonight. There's been so much growth here and um, it's like a momentum, it's, it's moving along. What exactly would you need to keep this going? Because I see Pulaski Street, with the amount of students that are in there, I see it pretty much equal to the amount of students that are in our middle school. Um, is there anything that, that you, like a wish, of what you could do or what you could have I to do. keep this 
I have one wish, uh, and, and thank you for this opportunity and question, and also thank you, Ms. Tona, I agree. It's because of the planning and the requirements from the designation that we created the plan and executed it. So all these things that we've executed, plan, and we get off this, the, this designation, we're still gonna keep in place because it's made this place a wonderful place, and we're only just begun. To answer your question, I have one wish. I truly do, and, and I'm gonna it. use this chance, and I'll say it quickly, here it is. This is unique to our building. It affects our culture from the staff. It impacts our academics. We have a very unique situation, and I know we all know, and thank you because the board and the district office had, have been trying to address this. But it's unique and it truly, truly impacts Pulaski Street in such a major way, and it comes down to substitutions. We as a building are very unique in the fact that we cannot draw from other staff members to cover and unfortunately we do not have the ability and I understand the compensation for middle school and high school if a teacher's out. We don't have that at Pulaski. If a teacher is out and subs are not available, we have to draw upon our support staff teachers to cover these classes for going services. That is my ultimate goal of all the things going forward somehow for this building alone, that would just put another layer, and I know it was brought up at the last Board of Education meeting, and thank you, I, I, I know the board members that had mentioned some things about benefits and other things, whatever the result is, that is the number one goal for me in my mind so because it impacts us on so many levels culture and and, and support so with that all the other things i have a list and i'll sh gladly share but to me that's my number one priority thank you very much oh, thank you for asking <laughs> no problem okay we're going to move along um consent agenda could i have a motion please Thank you, Therese. Could I have a second? second? Thank you, Brian. Anybody questions, cares, concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor, including myself, passed. Move on to, I'm going to move on to new business. This is the proposed budget. That the district, uh, the school board adopts the proposed budget as presented for the 2021-2022 school year in the total amount of $150,407,613 to be presented to the public at a budget hearing on May 11th, 2021 and subject to approval of the voters on May 18th 2021 and be it further resolved that the property tax report card for 2021-2022 school year be approved. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Brian. Could I have a second? Thank you, Matt. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Including myself. Resolution passes. Let it be. Appointment of vote workers for the special district meeting. And the school district appoints the following persons to the annual budget. I'm not gonna read all the people. Um, that they'll be, they're the workers on the budget. Could I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Virginia. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Matt. Any cares and concerns, questions? Not seeing any. All in favor, including myself, passed. Let us see. Approval of BOCES administrative budget. This is for the 2021-2022 administrative budget of the Eastern Suffolk Board of Cooperative Education Services. Can I have a motion, please? Thank you, Therese. Can I have a second? Thank you, Virginia. Any cares and concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Including myself, resolution passes. Election day, letter D, is the election of Eastern Suffolk BOCES board members. There is five candidates. Um, they're listed in alphabetical order here. Could we have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Matt. Can I have a second? second. 
Thank you, Brian. Any questions, cares, and concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor, including myself, resolution passes. Approval of memorandum of agreement. This is an agreement, memorandum agreement with the Riverhead Teacher Aids Unit dated April 20th, 2021, concerning the use of accumulated sick time. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Virginia. Can I have a second? Thank you, Brian. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Including myself, motion passes. Letter F, approval of field trip. This is a field trip, the high school NJROTC to visit Gettysburg National Military Park in Gettysburg, PA. Um, and along with that, that was, yeah, F. And then G, was the thing for? And then the award for contracts. Okay, letter F. Could I have a motion? Motion. Could I have a second? Thank you, Chris. Any cares and concerns, questions? Not seeing any. All in favor, including myself, is yes. Passes. G, award of new contracts. Number one is the masonry and related um, site work. Um, that's the Land Tech Group and Company in Bayshore, New York, and KJB Industries in Inc. in Riverhead. Um, number two is and Educational and Behavioral Services. It's Peconic Speech Services, PC, Riverhead, New York. Can I have a motion, please? Thank you, Therese. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Matt. Any questions, cares, and concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor, including myself, passes. Letter H, um, number one is South Hampton Public Schools solicited bid, SPS20-019 library supplies, furnishings, and equipment. Number two is South Hampton Public Schools solicited bid, SPS21-001 school supplies and materials. We, we group ourselves with other school districts and other municipalities in order to get a better deal price-wise on things. So do I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Virginia. Second? Thank you, Therese. Any questions, cares, and concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Including myself, yes. Letter I, renewal of co cooperative contract. This is a... Um, a solicited bid for replacement parts for a Chevy slash General Motors vehicle. Could I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Matt. Could I have a second? Thank you, Therese. Any cares and concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Including myself at the pass. Approval of donations. Number one is from the Pulaski Street PTO in the amount of $4,538.72 to install a water bottle filling station at Pulaski Street Elementary School. Number two is Peconic from Peconic Green Growth Riverhead. It's an irrigation system. And we have number three, it's a Bluetooth speaker and portable scoreboard from Donor Choice for use at Phillips Avenue Elementary School. And number four is two wood planter benches valued at $150 each from Jean Marie Mazzaro, Director of PPS Special Education for use in per, um, pupil personnel services. Thank you, everybody. Can I have a motion? Thank you, Chris. Could I have a second? second? Thank you, Brian. Any questions, cares, and concerns? 
No, thank you, though. Most definitely, thank you. Can I have a, a all in favor? Including myself? We got that. Do we have any, um, moving on to opportunity for board members, do we have any reports, any committee reports? I don't think there's any committees. Do you? Is there any reports? No. 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 I just have something as a board member. Okay, could I, board's okay. remarks? Yes. Go right ahead. Just, um, Sam, just a question. Now, when we approved the sports for uh, December 8th of 2020, did that include the 5 o'clock bus? Because I, I was reading the minutes. I didn't see if the bus was, wasn't really mentioned in it. Um, no, and we, we actually had heard that there was some apparent question about this, so we went back and listened to the discussion. There was, in the recording, there's no discussion of 5 o'clock bus, no. Okay. We might, have, we might have assumed. Any other board members? Uh, yes, if I may. Uh, Madam President, <clears throat> um, I, uh, as you well know, uh, Daniel DeSalvo, class of 2017, uh, passed away on Easter. Um, he was my nephew, um, and I wanted to say thank you to the community, to the district, to the board, to everybody for your condolences, the sharing of stories, and just reaching out. It meant a lot to my family, the DeSalvo family. Um, I just want to share one really cool thing about him. I mean, he was, he was an awesome dude. I can't say it, for lack of better words. He was an organ donor, and I mean, I could run down the list. I mean, everything from his eyes, heart, liver, lung, all went to somebody. So not only, you know, in death, he's touching lives. He saved countless lives through that. So I want to thank everybody for that. I just wanted to share that a little bit, and I really do appreciate it. All my whole family does. So thank you. Our condolences, Brian. Opportunity for your RCFA. Uh, good evening, and we're uh, the RCFA. Sorry about your loss, Mr. Conley. Um, the RCFA would like to take this opportunity to thank our brothers and sisters of the Matatuck Kachog Teachers Association for providing the faculty of Aquabog with a grab and go breakfast after the passing of Kem Kerry Stromsky. We appreciate their outreach to our members, and they should know that they made a difficult time in our members' lives a little bit more bearable. We would also like to congratulate Deborah Nigrell on receiving tenure. Thank you. Thank you. Opportunity for public comments. Do we have anything? One second, we're asking to see if anyone's online. Yes, there is one. Okay. okay. This Go is ahead. From, this is from Sarah Conrad from Aquabog. Since the announcement of the $14 million increase of state aid, I have been disheartened by the comments on social media. It is a blessing for our district to be able to reinstate all of the programs that were cut last spring due to the failed budget. I'd like to ask the board to keep the proposal in May a simple one, as I don't think that many members of our community fully understand that the budget passing won't increase their tax bill, and we desperately need this to pass. I ask the members of the community to vote yes and to continue to fight for the rest of the money our district is owed. I'd like to thank the board for showing up and stepping up and fighting for our children. You were all faced with a pandemic and a failed budget, and though I may not have agreed with every decision made or idea discussed, I truly believe that you are all serving our district because you love Riverhead, love our children, and know that they deserve big things. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Conrad. Kathy, Ms. Ferrezi, you were coming up. Remember, you got three minutes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm Kathy Berezny, Riverhead, New York. I just wanted to, I, I see the additions to the 21-22 budget, and I don't see anything for a nurse. And I remember when we were at the middle school rallying for foundation aid and how valuable and how important and how much needed was nursing because they had overload of paperwork and the students coming and going. And now with the pandemic and come September, all students will probably have to be vaccinated. So I was very displeased to see that there's not even one nurse here 
that was added to the additions of the budget. And I thought tonight we could, you know, um, I thought we could come and bring this up. And, and I know other years, the last minute, the superintendent of business would, 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 would make an uh, adjustment or something. But I, I just remember that rally. I attended it, and I know a lot of these board members did too. And not one, so I guess when nurses aren't that important anymore. Um, also, I wanted to, to uh, say, you know, thank you to the Palumbo and to Giglio for the um, the monies down from the state. But you know what? You have to thank your parents and the community at large. I wrote letters. I emailed. I called. I went to their offices. And I'm sure a lot of other parents did too. So I really feel like chopped liver. Uh, I don't know if the board members all do that, but I went and I had conversations about uh, for hours with Palumbo and hours with Giglio. And I went to Laval and I went and I wrote to everyone. Um, I wanted to thank Mr. Burke for the presentation on Pulaski. Pulaski is a special school after Roanoke, there, and then going on to middle school and high school. So thank you very much for a very nice presentation. Um, let's see, was there anything else? So I just wanted you to be cognizant about um, the nurses, okay? Just like last time, no proposition two. Now, next time, um, the nurses were so important and we're, our 16 year olds and older have to be vaccinated and eventually the 12 years and older will have to be vaccinated and I'm sure our, our nurses will have a lot of paperwork and I'm very disappointed. After we rallied so hard and the nurses up there were all there and you were there, Mrs. Downs, everybody was there. Some of these people were, some of them weren't. But anyway, um, and I also bring in some per permanent subs. I said that, and that's not even included here. Not even two or three. Thank you, Mrs. Downs. Thank you, Mrs. Berezny. I have a question. How many nurses do we have? And um, didn't we do something to bring, we did prior to this, we brought new nurses in, correct? Yes, we have two additional float nurses in the district that um, do provide coverages for the nurses during the day. We have nurses at uh, St. John Paul II and the charter school um, as required. So uh, right now, the, the number of nurses we have does meet our needs, but as mentioned in the budget presentation, there is additional money in case of uh, additional need that should arise. So if the board should wish to go in a, in a direction, um, we can definitely have that conversation. Thank you, Ms. Tona. Anyone else in the public? Please state your, state your name and, and Yes, good evening, count. Yolanda Thompson, Beating Hollow. May we move the mask? Remember, if that makes you feel comfortable. Remember, you got three minutes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to uh, address the board in regards to Ms. Tona. Um, you know, not many people in the public know that a superintendent is the only employee of a district that was well, not an employee of the school district itself, but it's the only employee that works directly for the Board of Education. Um, my husband and I would like to thank her for her service as the interim superintendent. Um, she stepped up to the plate during some of the most challenging times that our district has ever faced. Not only did she rise to the occasion in the aftermath of scandal, she also faced the challenges of the sudden departure of our previous superintendent, along with the defeat of the bonds, two failed budgets, and she did all of this while working under a contingency budget during a pandemic. And also to her credit, she faced all of these enormous challenges without accepting an increase in pay and she did so with only one assistant. Another thing that we would like to commend Ms. Tona for was for remaining professional under pressure and being very responsive to emails, phone calls, meetings in person when possible. She was always timely in her responses to my questions as well. We also fear that she made good faith efforts to get to know the community better, and as a result, she has had her pulse on the needs and the challenges facing our community, particularly regarding the sharp divide and fractures that exist over a few issues. So in conclusion, I just would like to take this letter of commendation and ask that it be placed in her permanent file. I would like to give this to the uh, district clerk, and this is something that I 
usually do at the end of school years when we've had a successful school year with our children's teachers. We like to place a letter of commendation in their files. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Is there anybody else? Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. I appreciate that. Anyone else in the public that would like to speak? Not seeing anybody. Could I have a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Matt. Second. Second. Thank you, Virginia. Any cares and concerns, questions? Not seeing any. All in favor, including myself, motion passes. Thank you, everyone. You have a safe trip home.